So the question I keep asking myself, the same question over and over again is, where is the car market going? And specifically Porsche, because no lie, this Porsche Macan GTS has really gotten me very excited about the brand. This is my second Porsche. My first Porsche was a Cayman 981. And the main reason why I really enjoyed that car was the driving experience and the mid-engine uh, feel and also the uh, sound that that engine produced and, and the intake right by your ear as you're driving. But the uh, Macan GTS has really, really kind of filled the gap for me uh, in the meantime as giving me the Porsche driving experience, uh, a great engine with the, uh, this one is the, I think this one's a three liter. I think it's a three liter. It's not the 95B.2, so I think it's a three liter. Don't hold me to it. I think the 95B.2 has a 2.9. But this engine, the exhaust note, uh, just driving this car, and not to mention putting the BC4's wheels on it, uh, using the seat lowering module, and more than likely, I'm gonna be adding the Cobb access port here in just a moment. But at the end of the day, it still comes down to where's the car market, market going? Has the market bubble kind of reached its max? Is it going to pop? Is it gonna deflate? Uh, is it temporary? Is it going to hold and it's going to go back up? And unfortunately, one of the biggest problems I have is the fact that Porsche is charging, most dealerships are charging a, uh, a fee for allocation in addition to the long lengthy wait times and the uncertainty of what you're actually gonna get due to availability. So that really kind of kills it for me as far as the upgrade for the future beyond the GTS, the Macan GTS. But then I'm thinking, you know, this is bridging the gap. It's a great vehicle, primarily for the experience, but for the four doors, the hatch, the back seat, the usable back seat. And I'm not a Panamera person. I'm not a Panamera person. And my wife actually told me, she said, hey, why don't you go get a Taycan uh, or a Taycan or Taycan? Taycan, I don't even know how you say it, but she's like, why don't you go get one of those? And honestly, for me, it's just not gonna do it because the sound isn't there. She goes, no, it has a sound. I said, I know, but I need to feel the sound, if that makes sense. However, moving on. The other thing is the fact that I can't get that electric vehicle to get me from here in Florida to Atlanta on a single charge. That's a problem. I'm not interested in stopping halfway or somewhere in between for a charge or maybe two somewheres in between for a charge. I'm not interested in possibly uh, having to plan my route that way and then uh, coming into an issue where I can't charge for whatever reason, but I've seen chargers go down uh, and there's no sound. So I'm not a Panamera person. I'm not a Tycon person. I'm not a Cayenne person. And so this is really doing it for me. The 911, we actually, uh, we actually try to do a 992. 911 but uh the whole family two in the front kid in the back and uh the kid said that she would make it work but it was not going to work for for long periods of time for instance today we met her at the bus stop we picked her up she jumped in the back we went on it was actually raining at that time so if we were in a 911 then my wife would have had to get out the car stand in the rain flip the seat forward kid climbs in the back yada 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 it's just not really going to work so while I'm limiting myself to one car, uh, being the Macan GTS, I need to make sure that it kind of like checks all the boxes, which makes me then think about ordering a new Macan, which this is where it gets interesting for me because the new Macan is all electric. At least I think that's what they're offering. Maybe they're offering a gas gasoline version, a ice version, I need to double check on that, but it's going, for the most part, they're pushing for the new Macan to be all electric. So if I can get past the dealer markup for the allocation, get an allocation, get it ordered and wait for it, hoping we don't, fingers crossed, have any additional supply chain issues that prevent the vehicle from being made or uh, any issues in transport where it doesn't make it. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. Felicity Ace was a, uh, a unique situation but you know these are concerns of mine when i'm ordering a new porsche so but here's the thing about the macan the new macan the new all electric ev macan 
you know, it takes some styling cues from the Tycon, which I don't mind. And I'm really interested to see it without the camouflage on it because I know they're extending that back window to make it look kind of odd, uh, to throw you off a little bit. They've, they've done some uh, work to the headlights. Uh, they, they even had one I saw on the Nürburgring with some uh, fake wheel arches on it, just to try to keep people from knowing really what it's gonna look like full production. But the thing about the Macan that gets me and you guys, please let me know how you feel about this, what you think about this, is the fact that it is not the, it's Porsche's EV line, the Taycan, was the first of its kind. So with that being said, the Macan is not the first of its kind. There are previous generations of the Macan. So this new EV Macan has a legend, a, a history, a pedigree to hold up to uh, that you're going to judge it based on, you know, there's a standard that it needs to, you know, uphold. Whereas the Taycan was, hey, it's all new. It is what it is. It's it's groundbreaking. It sets its own precedence. So uh, it didn't really have, you know, it, it allowed people to make their own opinion based on the car 100%. So for me, if I jump in a new Macan that's all electric and it doesn't excite me like this one does, then it's a letdown because I know what a Macan was. I know what a Macan could be or should be. And then now, because we introduced EV, 100% battery, zero emissions, trying to meet the standards of the EU, uh, and, and you know, clean, clean air, clean energy, all that. You know, it kind of ruins the car because there was a previous Macan that I know and I love. Does that make sense? So uh, I'm on the fence about that. Uh, and and no, honestly, some of the main, some of the dealerships have kind of like turned me off for the fact that I'm not of their higher echelon client. That if I want a 911, they flat out told me it's 50 grand. If you want a 911, it's 50 grand to get an allocation. If you want a, a GT3, then you don't even have the option to. But if you did, it would probably be about a hundred thousand to get the allocation. Uh, plus, then you got to wait, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it kind of turned me off a little bit because of that where, you know, other German car manufacturers, I can go and I can place an order and not have to pay this ridiculous markup because of the brand, because of their client clientele, et cetera, et cetera. So it's kind of th throw me off a little bit. It's kind of like would I almost rather pay to buy it pre-owned from someone else and pay their markup for the added uh, uh, appreciation and value increase of the used car market and avoid the weight? Maybe, maybe not, not sure. Uh, but with that being said, I do think that the car market bubble is about to deflate. I do think it is. I do think that these used car, used car values are gonna start coming down. And I was watching a video the other day of a young lady and she was discussing the future of the used car market, when to buy. And I think she ended the video with waiting six to 12 months, which is a pretty safe, suggestion to make wait six to 12 months and then two months later you watch it again she says wait six to 12 months it doesn't actually say specifically by starting this period by starting this month this season or whatever it's just wait six to 12 months the longer you wait the better your chances are theoretically i think now as we do start to see some improvements in the supply chain and some of these vehicles start rolling out and some of the semiconductor chips showing up and things like that and also money getting a little tight with the Fed and Jerome Powell raising interest rates, people are not as confident in the economy and their investments and certain things like that like they were at the beginning of the pandemic when we saw this flood of the market and people just buying up inventory left and right and dealerships paying way over book value to get the trades to then be in the situation to control the market of the pre-owned sales for the next generation of customers. So. These are all things to consider, but I wanted to bring it to you guys and, and, and get your opinion and ask you what you thought about, one, the future of the car market, two, the future of the Porsche Macan being all electric EV coming out, and, uh, and you know, maybe, what do you think I should do? Uh, and if anybody else is in the same situation as I am, the same shoes that I'm in, having the same thoughts and decisions that you're trying to make, uh, what are you guys doing? Just kind of curious. Let me know. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button. Turn on notifications. Share the videos. If you are in the cars, if you're in the Porsches, if you're into uh, Jeeps, uh, I got a few more vehicles that I'm going to showcase. I got a van too, a Mercedes Sprinter, uh, American Coach Patriot 3500 XD. If you guys are interested, 
But if you're just a car guy like me, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate it. Take care. See you later. Bye.